welcome back to Cap at Home. I'm Miss Van. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you all how to make bee hotel. So here's a bee hotel and you can tell it's a bee hotel because there's a bee on my bee hotel. Um, and here's another one, some more bees on a bee hotel. So, uh, climate change has caused some stress on our pollinators and I thought I would try to make things a little bit easier for them and make bee hotels so that they can get some rest. So, what you will need is a recyclable plastic bottle. I've got an assortment here of yarn. I have a hot glue gun that's been heating up and some glue stick refills and if you use a hot glue gun make sure you put some paper or something on it to catch the glue drips as it heats up and then I have refills and then to make the little I guess you would say hotel rooms or beds you need newspaper and masking tape and then as an option if you want to paint uh, little pictures on your bee hotel to make them that much cuter. Uh, you can use, uh, for this project I have an assortment of acrylic paints, uh, some water for my paintbrush, and a paintbrush. I have two paintbrushes. So, oh, and uh, I'm using a paper plate for my palette today. So what you will need to do is, oh, and, um, sorry, a utility knife. Um, I'm going to do most of the cutting with my scissors, but the utility knife is just an easy way to get started. Um, also, I have a Sharpie marker. I don't necessarily need it, but I'm just going to use it to show you guys at home um, where you will make your initial cuts with the utility knife. And as always, you want to be super careful with all of these materials. So like right here where the bottle starts to taper, I'm going to make a cut with the utility knife. And I'm going to make another one about here just to keep it kind of like a simpler shape, like a cylinder. And actually, I'm just going to use... The utility knife here this is um, it has like a locking option so I'm just gonna lock it so the blade doesn't slide on me and I'm gonna cut away from myself and I'm just gonna make like a little cut it's barely a centimeter long just to kind of get things started and then I'm gonna use my scissors for the rest of it and I'm putting this away I'm kind of locking it in place with the blade all the way down and that's it for the utility knife today so also um, you're gonna come across some just little odds and ends that you may not use again so it's a good idea to have a garbage can with a bag handy and I have one right over here so that's where I'm gonna put all my little paper scraps that I end up with and I'm going to put these pieces of plastic that I'm not going to use just right in the trash. And uh, this came with a cap, which I am saving so I can make some of Allie's clackers. Miss Allie made these really cute clackers a while ago, and I've been meaning to make one. So, that is another cap at home video that was just, like, too cute. So this is going in the garbage, and now I have this nice little cylinder. And I already started pre-rolling some little bee hotel rooms, but just to kind of show you, I'm going to make a couple right now. So I have some little pieces of pre-cut masking tape off to the side here, and I'm just going to roll a little tube out of this newspaper. and tape it shut with a piece of masking tape. So now I have all of this, and this is just gonna, I'm just gonna stick them in here. Actually, I'm gonna put the, 
covering on first because it's just easier to do that. So I'm going to use, I've got some bright green yarn. I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna use a couple of different colors and I've got this sort of turquoise color and some dark green yarn. So I'm going to start with the dark green yarn and I'm not gonna cut this until I'm done just because I think it's easier. Uh, when you're working with someone, you're sharing materials, it's a good idea to maybe just like take a few feet for this project and cut it. But since it's just me here right now, uh, I'm trying to waste a little bit less, so I'm just going to leave it. And I'm already out of glue, so I'm gonna reload my glue gun with a glue stick, like that. There we go. So I just, I start by putting like a little dab of hot glue on the end to get me started. And then I like the way that this plastic bottle has all of these little uh, ridges. So I'm just going to wrap, start wrapping this yarn. And I'm not going to be super precise about this part because as you kind of layer it on, it'll start to hold the other colors and the other pieces of string in place and when I get to the end I'm gonna take my hot glue gun again and I'm just gonna run kind of a line of glue down one side of this cylinder now this nice plastic cylinder that I made also if you're working outside like I am today it's pretty hot recommend you have some water to drink which I'm going to do I just I have a glass of water here it's really important to stay hydrated when you're outside in the summertime I mean when you're outside in general but especially when it's so hot out and I'm just going to go kind of down one more time and I think that's it for the dark green so I'm going to glue that here but I'm going to give it a second to kind of solidify and fortunately I have some scissors right here so I'm just going to cut that I'm going to cut that where is it there it is the um, hot glue just kind of makes strings as you're working so I just you can wait and cut them at the end, but I just happened to have the scissors right there, so I did it then. And I have a tangle. Alright, so now I'm going to take this bright green color, and my glue is still a little bit tacky, so I can just kind of press the new thread into place. And I'm going to go across a few different times. And I'm going to call that good. And I'm going to go to my next color, which is this bright turquoise. And I'm going to make another line because I didn't really add any glue for the bright green, so I'm just going to stick it all on with a nice line of hot glue now. Alright, so that is good. I'm going to trim this piece of string right here. wrap up my dark green and put it back in my yarn bin. I'm going to wrap up my light green and put it back in my yarn bin. And then I'm going to kind of start unraveling my bright turquoise. And now I'm going to be a little bit more careful to kind of fill in the gaps. Um, this part, I mean, aside from being super stylish and fun, also just kind of creates some shade it also sort of mimics what 
a real beehive would look like and the bright colors make it kind of attractive or flower-like. So raise your hand if you like flowers. I do, I do, I like flowers. So in order to get flowers, something needs to pollinate it. And bees, aside from making delicious honey, pollinate flowers. So, let's just give them a, a nice shady place to, to hang out while they're doing bee things. And there we go. Now we have the covering and it's nice and shady. Just kind of like it is in my yard right now. It's nice. There's a nice breeze. So I'm going to dab some glue on the end here so that string, that piece of yarn doesn't unravel. And then I'm also just, to keep everything in place, going to run another line of glue. And this is pretty much it for the glue. So I'm going to set that aside. Alright, so now that that's ready, uh, you need something to hang your bee hotel up from. So I'm going to take a piece of string, like this has a piece of string. I kind of went, the first one I did, I kind of went through the string, but I don't like that idea so much. On the second one, I went through the entire cylinder. So that's what I'm going to do this time. And that's the good thing about doing a project a few different times, is you can kind of figure it out. And maybe the way you did it the first time isn't necessarily the best way to do it every time. So you kind of learn something every single time you do something. All right. So this is a piece of string. I didn't really measure it. Um, the other day when I made these, I hung my bee hotels from the posts on the fence. So that's kind of my idea. You can also hang them from a tree or a bush or just anything that will support, this doesn't weigh very much, anything that will support this light amount of weight. So I'm going to keep that in mind, like the place that I'm hanging my bee hotel in mind when I cut the length of string. But this is just long enough so that I can put the string around one of the fence posts. All right. So you just tie a simple knot, and that's it. Now you're going to make the inside. So I pre-made a bunch of these tubes. But I'm going to show you. It's super simple how to make them. You just, um, you kind of want to get a piece of paper that is, like I use newspaper, and you just want to cut it just slightly shorter than the cylinder here. So I just, I kind of, just guesstimated for this project. Nothing is super precise. And I just kind of roll a nice little tube out of the newspaper and take some tape I pre-cut. And this is the power of planning, folks. So now I'm just going to stuff the cylinder with these Let's see if I have enough. It should, you shouldn't really need anything to hold them in place. You should just, it should just be enough tubes in here to keep them all snug against each other. And I'm going to need a couple more. So I'm just going to make a couple more here. Ooh, actually. And they're all kind of slightly different sizes. This is pretty close, but I'm just going to make make a couple more. And I'm pushing them kind of to the middle. Hello! It's kind of what it looks like through the eye of a bee, because their eyes have a lot of little lenses. So you get... That's kind of an interesting way to think about looking at something like imagine you were looking at a 
I don't know how many, but like maybe let's say a hundred cameras this big. That's what an, a bee's eye, like that's how they see everything all the time. That's just interesting to me. So that's pretty snug. So this will hang like this. And I'm just going to add a little decoration. I think since this is kind of green and turquoise, it looks like the sky and it reminds me of like the sky and grass. I'm gonna draw some flowers. Paint, I'm gonna paint some flowers. So acrylic paint is gonna be kind of, in my opinion, the best thing to paint on this yarn surface. So I've got some paint here. And this is purple, and I'm going to mix and kind of make a light purple with this light blue. And it kind of got dry on me while I was setting up. So I can add a little bit more. I'm just going to paint some flowers. here just to decorate it. I'm going to add some red. Green, all dried up, and then add some more green. Hmm. Good thing I have some paper towel right here. It kind of came out on me. I spilled paint. Oh no! What? That's okay. I don't mind. All right. Some green. And then I have a little piece of paper towel on my tripod for my camera is holding it in place, but between colors, I'm just going to dab on the paper towel. This kind of helps make sure all of the paint is out of your paintbrush. And I don't know about you, but I like wildflowers. I think about those like little light purple flowers that kind of grow all over the place. I don't know what they're called, but that's what I'm trying to paint. They're a wildflower. So I'm going to grow or paint some wildflowers on here. It's kind of what I did on this one. These are my wildflowers. And I'm just kind of mixing a little bit of this purple and this blue to get it's like the perfect shade. I don't even know what it is, but I'll let you know when I figure it out. Painting is really relaxing and I enjoy it. I highly recommend painting for anyone that wants to try it. Alright, so I've got some flowers. I'm going to add some green here for another stem and maybe for a couple of leaves. Leaves, leaves. One leaf is a leaf. Multiple leaves. 
our leaves with a V. So the an F. Just the things that run through your head when you're focused. All right, there's some wildflowers. Now I'm gonna add a bee. So I, I don't know about you, but I like honeybees. And honeybees are striped. So I'm gonna use some yellow here. And it looks like my orange is still good. And I'm gonna mix some brown because they're kind of like brown and yellow stripes. And this paint is kind of old, so it's like it's interesting. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna make a B. First, I'm gonna do the yellow stripes just to keep my brush from having to be washed so many times. So I'm gonna just make a couple, maybe a couple of bees. So here's one yellow stripe for one bee and a couple yellow stripes. Three, I think, is a good number. So here's three yellow stripes for the start of one bee, and then I'm going to put another one right here. And this is also going to get three yellow stripes for a second bee. And I have two bees started. So I'm going to mix some brown. And this is a really dark brown, so I'm going to add some yellow to it to make it lighter. And I'm thinking about that really pretty amber color that the honey that I like is. So I'm going to add some orange too. So it's just it's a nice ambery color. I'm just going to alternate and I'm thinking about the shape of the last bee I saw if you like think about it in like two-dimensional terms because my painting is very two-dimensional it looks kind of like an oval so I'm sort of gonna taper I'm gonna taper my bee so it's kind of oval shaped in the flat two dimension. And here we go. Mixing some more of that nice ambery color for my second B. Need some more orange. There we go. I like that better. All right. So I'm going to add some black eyes, really dark brown for the eyes. Alright, and now I'm going to do the wings. And the wings, I'm going to make them blue and white. I'm actually going to need some more white. blue to be the wings. At first I think I'm going to use the light blue that I already have to be my outline for the wings. the white and the blue and make this really light blue. And now we'll have really light blue, which is kind of like a clear color. 
And if you were looking at a bee wing really close, you would see the sky through it, which is probably why you think of bee wings as being that like shimmery color. But I made them the really light blue because they're clear actually, but you see the sky through them. Alright, so here are some wildflowers and a picture of the bees that I hope to find this bee hotel. And that is it. I'm going to dip my brush in some nice cool water to wash it out and dab it on my paper towel. I'm going to hang this up where it goes to dry. clean up a little bit. So I'm going to take this. I don't need this anymore. I don't need my palette anymore. And I'm going to keep my little pieces of newspaper for later. And that, my friends, is the end. I hope you enjoyed this class. Hello, goodbye. Um, if you do make a bee hotel, please take a picture and post it in the comment section on this video. Uh, we love to see anything you make. Alright, have a great day!